Hey kids, welcome to Woods Kids this Easter. My name is Zach. My name is Emma. We are backpackers. We're gonna be traveling around the globe today. I hope you are ready. But uh, Emma, because we are gonna be traveling around the globe, you are gonna need a passport. We brought our passport, so we're ready to go. We're ready to go. And if you're joining us in person, you'll have your passport with you. But if you're joining us online, go to wooddale.org slash destination dash Easter. And to find our lesson and your passport will be in there. So we're gonna give you one minute to do that. So make sure you do that, print it out, ready, go. Go, 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 go! How many, how many countries have you visited? Um, at least one. Wow, that's yeah. impressive. Thank you. I have like 87. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. close, pretty, pretty close. close, yeah. Hey, did you have your passport? All right, well, you are gonna need this today because we're gonna visit a ton of destinations. So keep it close and nearby you. Emma, talking about destinations, I have some music from a certain country. Go ahead and play it. Okay. Oh, I like this. This, this makes me wanna dance. Is it from India? Yes! Emma got it. Oh, yes. I give her a round of applause. All right, this is Bollywood music, also known as filmy music, okay? Oh. We're, I'm going to show you a kind of a Bollywood dance that goes along with this music. Go ahead and stand on up. Emma, you're already up. So you're yeah, already ready. Right? Here's how you do. So stand on up. Take one hand, place it on your hip. Take the other hand and lift it up high. There it is. Uh, and you're going to pretend like you're unscrewing a light bulb, okay? Oh, okay. And you're going to kind of move your hip back and forth, okay? So here we go. Everybody, can you do it? There we go. All right, I like okay. it. So it's basically Indian pop music. You probably have never heard of it unless you've traveled to India before, right? Yeah, that's very was that cool. your one destination on your passport? Yeah, it was actually. Oh, perfect. That's yeah. how Miss Emma must have known that. Well, Emma, another really cool landmark that you could find in India is the Taj Mahal. Let's wow. check it out. That's right. The Taj Mahal means crown of the palace and it's located on the southern bank of the river Yumana in the city of Agra. It was completed around 1643 by the Emperor Shah Jahan as a tomb for his wife. It cost 32 million rupees, which today, Emma, would be 956 Whoa. million US dollars. And it's one of the new seven wonders of the world. Wow. Isn't that pretty That's cool? That's amazing. I, I, wow. I agree as well. Yeah, so make sure you write the Taj Mahal on your passport. How you spell it? It is T A J space M A H A L. So write Taj Mahal on your passport because that's our destination number one. And talking about a place with amazing music, we're going to go into our first worship song talking about how God is a global God. And we're going to visit more countries in that song. So stand up on your feet and here we go with our first worship song.
job with that worship song. You guys are amazing. Make sure that you take a seat because we're going to jump into our game. That's right, Emma. Our game today is called Destination Landmark. So here's how it's gonna work. I'm gonna tell you about a landmark, okay? And you're gonna have to guess what destination that landmark is in. All right, kids? And you're gonna have to scream at the screen as well because you are guessing along with Miss Emma. Once you get it right, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the landmark. And then kids, we're gonna fill it in on our passport because that is a destination that we have traveled to. So our second destination we're going to today, Emma, has the landmark, the Coliseum. It's someplace I've actually been to in person before. Huh, the Coliseum, that's pretty cool. One of the 87 countries that you've been to? Yes, it wow. is. Wow, yep. wow, Okay, yep. the Coliseum. Kids, do you want to help him out? Familiar. What? Guys, what do you think? Where do you what think do you it's think? from? Where is the it Coliseum, at? Coliseum, where? I think I heard someone say Italy? Yes, that's correct. Awesome. Whoever said that, great job. It is in Rome, Italy. Let me tell you a little bit about the Coliseum. Here we go. The Coliseum is an amphitheater in the center of Rome, Italy. It's the largest ancient amphitheater ever to be built. And the largest still standing today, Emma. It's incredible. It was built in 80 AD. So that's like only 80 years after Jesus was born. And it could hold about 50 to 80,000 Romans. So big. And it's one of the seven wonders of the ancient Wow. I think that's, that's a really cool. old thing and that's really cool. It really is. And that's incredible. That's our second destination for today. So open your passport again. This time, let's write down Rome, Italy. That's R-O-M-E, comma, and then I-T-A-L-Y. Rome, Italy, the second destination we just visited. Great. Well, Zach, I think I have another destination that I was thinking of. Oh, sure. Yeah, and that destination has the pyramids. Oh, the pyramids. Yeah, they're like these big uh, pointy, like triangles, like sculptures. Is it, wait, is this a destination that we have heard about in the Bible? Like the Old uh, Testament? Yeah, actually it is. Would it, it is. happen to involve maybe Joseph? I think so. Kids, do you, I think I know what it is. Do you know what it is? Uh, I'm gonna guess Egypt? Yes, very yes. good. Great job. So let me tell you a little bit about Cairo, Egypt. So the Giza pyramids, complex sits at Cairo, Egypt and houses three giant pyramids along with smaller complexes and the Great Sphinx. Mm. It was probably built in the Old Kingdom of Ancient Egypt. These giant structures are tombs and sit on the list of one of the seven wonders of the world and some of the oldest on that list. Wow, isn't that incredible? Yeah, I mean, I didn't really know all of that about the Giza yeah. Pyramids, so that's pretty very awesome. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so our third destination on our passport is going to be Cairo, Egypt. And let me spell it for you. So it's C-A-I-R-O, comma, E-G-Y-P-T, Cairo, Egypt. That is incredible. All right, Emma, I have, this would be our fourth destination for today. Yeah. All right, where? is the Great Ball Found. Now, I can't actually say the full name because if I said the full name, you're gonna easily guess this location. The Great Wall, and I'll give you a hint. It's okay. the Great Wall of this location. Okay, Great Wall of something. Great Wall, I think I'm gonna have to say the Great Wall of Chile. Ooh. Kids, is that correct? <laughs> No, it's not. Uh, good guess. It is the Great Wall of China. Oh, okay, Yeah, okay. that's right. That makes a little that more sense. That makes more sense. Let me tell you a little bit about okay. it. Okay. Yeah. So the Great Wall of China is a series of fortifications or a wall that was built to protect ancient Chinese states. The first sections were built hundreds of years before the birth of Jesus, and others were added a little later. The main purpose of the structure was to help with defense, but also to encourage trade and immigration. It is still recognized as one of the most impressive agricultural feats in history. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I totally get why it's not Chile, but yeah. China. Yeah, exactly. I've heard of the Great Wall of China. And now that you're now you're like, wait, yeah, I've heard now of it. I remember. It's cool. okay. It's hard. Okay. It's hard being quiz kids. Yes. All right. So open up your passport. Fourth destination. You can even put a four by it if you want. It's just China. C H I N A. C H I N A. China. Awesome. All right, I think I have another one. All right, I'm ready. I'm thinking one. So, this place has the Eiffel Tower. Mm. The Eiffel Tower. Where in the world is the Eiffel Tower? Okay. I think I, I think I have it narrowed between two. Okay. I know they both have kind of big structures. It's either 
It's either Britain, okay, okay, or it's France. Hmm. They both have kind of a Britain lot. Or Britain or France. France? Kids, do you have a guess? Hmm. Britain or France? Uh, which I'm hearing more France. I'm gonna guess yeah. maybe France. You're right. Woo! Great job. So with the Eiffel Tower, let me tell you a little bit about the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is a massive tower that sits in Paris, France. It is nicknamed La Dame des Fer, which means the Iron Lady in French. It was completed in 1889 for the World's Fair. The Eiffel Tower is the most visited monument in the world. What? Wow! The tower is the tallest structure in Paris and holds three levels for visitors to visit. That's pretty cool. That's that's awesome. Three levels for us to visit. Emma, I mean, if we're talking about France, I'm going to mine the Eiffel Tower. Why would you do that? Yes, yes, yes. Is that, that was pretty good. I that think was pretty so. good. Yeah. I think so. That's pretty. That's pretty good. Yeah. No. Yeah, very good. Okay, so in our passports, open those back up. We are gonna write Paris, France. So how to spell it is P A R I S, comma F R A N C E. Paris, France. That is. Wait, wait. That's an incredible fifth destination. Yes, Emma. I love it. All right, so we have two more destinations okay, we're gonna visit at least in this game. So the next destination I have for you holds. Castle. This castle is called Disney World. Uh, kind of actually. That's closer than okay. you might think. Okay. It's called Norschwanstein. Oh, how do you say it? Norschwanstein. Norschwanstein. Definitely yes. not Disney World. No. Okay. Okay. No. Uh huh. Kids, have you heard about it? Is there have anybody that can help? This castle. Does anyone know? I can hear crickets. I don't know if anyone yeah, knows Yeah, I don't this know. One. I mean, Disney World was my only guess, but is it in Europe somewhere? Yeah, that's a great okay. guess. Actually, okay. it is. Should I just go ahead yes, and tell yes, you? Because Europe, me. I I see that as a win. It is located in Bavaria, Let me, which is kind of like Germany, so just think Germany. Okay. Let me tell you a little bit about that. Norschwanstein Castle sits in the southern Bavaria, kind of close to Germany, and it's a massive castle that was built in the 19th century. This palace was commissioned by King Ludwig II as his retreat. And Emma, you kind of already guessed this, but Walt Disney gained his inspiration for the castle you see at Disneyland and Disney World and on the Disney logo from this castle, wow. Norschwanstein. You know, it attracts over 1.3 million people to it every year. Wow, I had no idea. That was just a guess. I know, but that's, friends, that's pretty impressive. I'll, I'll give you that. Thank you, thank you, yes. Well, we'll go ahead and just spell Germany because that's a little easier for us to memorize this time, Norschwanstein. Thank mm. you. So go ahead. Germany is spelled G-E-R-M-A. N Y Germany as our sixth location. Awesome. All right, so I have our very last, our seventh destination. And this one is called Christ the Redeemer. Oh, that's easy, the Bible. Uh, the Bible isn't a place, Zach, it's a book. Oh, that's but it right. is the living word, so I understand. Uh, okay. Okay, so not the Bible. Not the Bible, but it is called Christ the Redeemer, so I'll okay. give you some points for that. Okay. Okay, this is probably the best guess. Is it like Bethlehem, Jerusalem? No. Oh. But good job for knowing that. I tried to guess. Yeah, so Christ the Redeemer is actually in Rio, Brazil. How many of you knew that? Wow, okay, cool. So let me tell you a little bit about Christ the Redeemer. Christ the Redeemer is a giant statue of Jesus that was built in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It sits atop the Corocavado Mountain and is almost 100 feet tall, while the arms stretch out to be about 92 feet wide. Wow. The statue is a cultural icon for Brazil as one of the seven wonders of the world and is also a symbol of Christianity in the country and all over the world. Wow, that's really cool. That is right? super cool. I didn't really know there's a huge statue of Jesus somewhere in the world. I know, that's, that's awesome, awesome right? Yeah. Okay, so let's take our passports and for our game, this is our last destination for our game and we're going to do Rio Brazil. So it is spelled R-I-O, comma, B R A Z I L. Rio Brazil. Awesome. Well, you know what? Talking about Brazil, Emma, you know, they're also famous for music. I don't oh. know if you knew, know that, but a certain style of music. Let's play it. This is called samba music. Kids, stand up because I'm going to teach you a little bit of samba dance. You take your hands, place them both on your hips. Okay. And you can't see our feet, so you're just going to have to imagine. Put one feet 
forward, turn the other foot, and like step forward with the other foot behind the first foot, and then step back with your first foot, and step forward again, and then kind of just keep repeating that. So it's just like... Do, 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 do. We are butchering this dance right now, but it, we gave it a shot, yeah. so it's okay. Great job. Okay, so speaking of music and dancing, we're gonna go into our next worship song. So stay standing, and here we go with that song. Kids, okay, you can go ahead and have a seat. Emma, we visited some awesome destinations. Let's see, let's open up our passports and see. We've been to China, to Paris, to Egypt, to Italy, to Brazil. Brazil? We were just in Brazil as yeah. well. We've been to a ton of destinations today, which is, I think, really cool. Yeah, but Zach, I gotta say, we haven't been to the most important, the most amazing destination, and that's actually where I'm headed off to now. Oh. So I've gotta go, but see you guys later. All right, I hope you packed everything you needed. Make sure to pack an extra passport in case you lose that one. Oh, she's already gone. She didn't hear me. Whatever. Friends, all right. We have an awesome Bible story that we're going to watch here in a second. But before I do, 
there's something special inside this egg. Do you want to see what it is? Well, you're going to have to wait until you listen to our Bible story. So stay sitting. Let's listen to an incredible true story from the Bible. Here we go. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the entire Bible. In the beginning. God created a magnificent paradise and everything in it was good. He created water and land and plants and trees and birds and fish and animals. And then, from the very dust of the earth, God created a man called Adam. He created a woman called Eve. They were the first two people on earth, made in God's image, living peacefully in paradise. Adam and Eve were friends with God, but then, they made a terrible choice. God had given Adam and Eve one rule. You must not eat the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, you will certainly die. But the temptation was too great for Adam and Eve. They broke God's rule and what was once a paradise became a broken world. People started telling lies. It was the woman you put here with me. She made me eat it brother fought against brother. Ah, no! Selfishness spread through generations. When there had been peace in the garden, now there was pain and sin and death separating people from their creator. But God had a plan to make peace once again with the people he loved so much. Hundreds of years after Adam and Eve broke his rule, God chose a man named Abraham and said, all nations on earth will be blessed because of you. Look up at the sky. Count the stars if you can. That's how many children will be born into your family. So Abraham had a son, Isaac, and Isaac grew up to have two sons of his own, Jacob and Esau. And those two sons had children of their own. Jacob, who God renamed Israel, he himself had 12 sons. So, God had given Abraham a huge family just like he promised, but God's people, the Israelites, were still lost and broken, separated from him. They still did not have peace. They didn't have peace when God rescued them from slavery in Egypt, when God led them through the Red Sea to escape their enemies. Okay, great. But what are we supposed to eat out here in the desert? <laughs> Sand? <laughs> The nation of Israel didn't have peace when God gave them a new law. These commandments are hard. We want a king like all the other nations. They didn't even get peace when God gave them a king. The king's laws are no fair. We want a new God like all the other nations. Nope, nothing gave God's people lasting peace. They were still lost and broken and separated from God for thousands of years. But. God had not forgotten the promise he made to Abraham. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God still had a plan to show the people just how much he cared for them. He knew this broken world would never be able to rescue itself, so God made a way. God sent his son, Jesus, to bring peace on earth once and for all. Jesus grew up and he taught people love and compassion, forgiveness and grace. He healed the sick and befriended the outcasts. He saw what was wrong and made it right. He loved the world and its people so deeply, he gave his life on a cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. In Colossians, the Apostle Paul tells us God made peace through Christ's blood, through his death on the cross. When Jesus chose to give up his life, he paid the cost of every sin ever committed and every sin that had yet to be committed. People no longer had to be separated from God. But in the three dark days immediately following Jesus' death, his followers didn't understand all of that yet. They huddled in the dark, afraid that they too might be arrested or even killed. 
Who's there? Early on the morning of the third day, Mary Magdalene arrived at the home where the disciples were staying. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. The disciples stared at each other in shock. Then, Peter and John lunged for the door. They raced each other all the way back to the tomb where Jesus had been placed. The tomb really is empty. There are the linen cloths they wrapped him in. Peter and John returned home, still uncertain and confused. And Mary Magdalene, who had followed them, stayed behind in the garden. And as she wept, she noticed a man standing nearby. And at first, she thought he was the gardener. Sir, did you carry Jesus away? Tell me where you put him. Mary. The instant the man spoke, Mary Magdalene knew immediately who he was. It was Jesus, alive again. Teacher. Overjoyed, Mary returned to the disciples to share the incredible news. I have seen the Lord. It was true. Jesus had come back from the dead. He's more powerful than sin, more powerful than death. And through him, we can have peace with God and work toward peace with others as God intended from the very beginning. Friends, wasn't that an incredible story? A great overview of the Bible and who Jesus is and why he came here on this earth. Now, I did promise you that if you watch the story, I would show you what's inside this egg. Are you ready? Do you have any guesses? All right, let's find out. It's empty. There's actually nothing inside of it. Now, I know some of you actually might be disappointed. You were hoping for something cool to jump out. But on Easter, that's actually the greatest news we could ever have, is that the egg's empty. But it wasn't an egg that we just talked about in our Bible story. It was the tomb. The tomb on Easter was empty. That means that Jesus fulfilled his promise. He went to the cross and died for us. And in doing so, he rose again in three days, fulfilling the promise that he defeated death, friends, that he defeated sin, and that he's able to save us from death and from our sins as well. You know, we sang a worship song at the beginning of this morning, and it was, comes from 1 John 4.14. And 1 John 4.14 says, and we get to it. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And friends, that's the incredible news, is that Jesus came to save every single person in the world who is ready to be his friend, accept his grace, and be forgiven. Now, how did Jesus save the world? Well, we kind of learned about it in our Bible story, but I want to kind of show you a physical example. You know, you've probably made wrong choices. I'm an adult and I've made wrong choices as well. These wrong choices are called sin, right? They're, they're, they're bad things that we do. Like if we make fun of someone or we hurt someone close to us or someone even not close to us, you know, we disobey our parents. Those are bad and wrong choices that we make and they pile up for us and they're called sin. Right now, they're, they're super heavy. Imagine if this backpack, if you had to wear a backpack of all the bad and wrong choices you've made and it's sin. And guess what happens? Over time, this backpack will get more and more heavy and it would just, it would weigh me down in life and I couldn't really go anywhere. Friends, unfortunately, that's kind of how we live. It's the bad choices, they're just, they're with us. They're the sin that attaches to us and it keeps us away from God. But the great news of Easter is that Jesus came to earth. He died on the cross. And what he did by dying on the cross is he said, Zach, I want to take this backpack from you. All this sin, all the bad choices. And he takes that off us and he makes us super light. And we don't have to carry those bad choices with us anymore. Instead, we can be free, free to love others, free to accept God's grace and to love him. And the great news about all of that is Jesus is ready to be your friend. All he asks is that we see the sin that we have in our lives, that backpack carrying us down, all the wrong choices. We ask for forgiveness. We say, Jesus, we've messed up. We've made bad choices. We've sinned. Can you forgive me? Can you take that backpack of sin from me? And then we ask him, Jesus, can you be my friend forever? And he's promised us in scripture that if we do those things, he will be with us for the rest of our life. And we don't have to fear anything, not even death, because we'll be able to live with him here on earth and later on in heaven. Friends, if you're ready to make that commitment, would you say a prayer with me? And kids, if you've already accepted Jesus in your life, here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray for other kids who haven't said yes to Jesus, who haven't accepted Jesus as their savior. 
why don't you pray with me, if you're ready, to say yes to Jesus. Take your hands, clap them together, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for an amazing morning of visiting a ton of different destinations. Lord, we know truthfully though that the most important destination is the empty tomb. And through the empty tomb, Lord, we're able to meet you, the most important person. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord. We want a relationship with you. We ask for forgiveness of our sins that are weighing us down, that backpack full of sin, Lord, and bad choices. We know it's wrong, Lord, and we know you are the only one who can forgive us, God. And kids out there, if you're ready to say yes to Jesus, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I have sinned. Can you forgive me? Will you be my friend forever? I love you, and I want to live for you and with you forever. In your holy and precious name, amen. Well, amen. Kids, if that's the first time that you have said yes to Jesus, guess what? The Bible tells us that there is a party happening in heaven right now. That is incredible. Parents, kids, if you've said yes to Jesus and you're with us in person, go ahead and find a leader and tell them that you've done that. If you're with us online, go to wooddale.org slash destination dash Easter. And there's a button that says, I've said yes to Jesus. Go ahead and click that because I personally have something I wanna send you. Okay, kids, make sure to click that because I wanna send this thing to you as well. That is pretty incredible. Well, that kind of wraps up our whole destination Easter because we visited a ton of destinations in our passport. We've also heard the good, good news, which is incredible. Friends, I hope I see you back next week because we start an uh, incredible new month this April of talking about how we can be peacemakers. And I want you to go ahead and look on our wooddale.org website for an incredible summer experience we call VBS. Until then, it was great backpacking with you. You know what? I just got a text message from Miss Emma. She is lost to the airport because she lost both of her passports. So now I guess I have to bring her a third. We'll catch you later, friends. Bye.